Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. In this episode we're going to be looking at this uh, battered Backman Standard 5 Loco that I've had knocking around in the repairs drawer for some time now. Uh, looking at the tender, the tender doesn't look to be in too bad a condition. Everything is there apart from one of the front tender steps which has snapped off. The um, piece at the bottom there that holds the draw bar is also missing. And there's a uh, detailed piece missing off the back head. But other than that, it doesn't look too bad. Whereas the actual loco part of the model is missing most of its glazing. The top detail part is loose. There's a handrail missing on one side. The front handrail is broken and missing. The buffers are missing and it's missing a front coupling. So it has been battered about a bit. And I actually bought it in this condition with a view to doing it on one of these videos. Now... It is, uh, it is quite uh, a lot of cosmetic damage, but I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it. But first, we're going to put it on the um, track to see if it runs with a battery. Now, it did try and run, but it was very intermittent, and there was a strange sort of electrical... Not, not burning smell, but there was an electrical, something going on inside of it that wasn't quite right. So we're going to have to open this up and have a look. Now, this is one of the uh, depicts a later Standard 5 with the speedometer drive. So to remove the body shell, you have to remove a screw under the smoke box. There's a screw under the cab floor that also holds the tender drawbar in place. But you must also undo this small flat-headed screw in the crank pin here. That releases the speedometer drive, which is part of the body shell. You won't be able to get it off without removing this unless you want to snap that cable, which um, I'm amazed is actually still in place. Now opening it up, this is the a DCC ready model, which will save me some soldering later on. And it all looks to be good. So I've in, it's in the loco cradle now, and I'm going to remove the base keeper plate to have a look, see if there's any congealed mess and oil. Now this is hard wired through, so just releasing some wires from the wiring loom there allows me to manipulate it round to show me the axles. Now there's no proper bearings, they sit in the die cast chassis. And to my absolute astonishment, this is bone dry. There is no old lubrication or grease in this model whatsoever. I was expecting to open it up to find congealed grease and oil, but as you'll see on this cotton bud, there is virtually nothing in here in relay in the way of dirt. So uh, it was either not lubricated from the factory or it has been cleaned in the past or it has just simply all evaporated away, but that doesn't explain where the grease would have gone. So having cleaned the axles, um, for what it was worth, I'm now going to re-lubricate them by putting a small amount of oil on the axles because, like I said, they don't sit in any sort of proper bearings. And then using the, uh, the very last vestiges of my grease out my grease pot, I'm going to put some uh, silicon grease on the drive, on the, on the drive gear there um, because it was completely dry. There was no factory lubrication left. So I'm just going to uh, clean the pickups, just give them a wipe over, not that there's any fluff or anything on them. And then once that's all done, I'm going to refit the uh, base keeper plate here because uh, there's no reason to keep it off. That's all been done uh, relatively quickly, which makes a nice change. Usually I'm left with a pot full of black and dirty uh, cotton buds when I've done this, but uh, not the case this time. So I'm going to reattach uh, the screws. And then I'm going to have a look at the top. I'm going to remove the cover that goes over the motor worm gear. This is removed by uh, two small screws and then just lifts off. And again, there's a little bit of uh, factory lubrication left, but it, that's very dry. So I'm going to add a small amount of grease on there just so that it spreads down through the drivetrain and that everything is nicely lubricated. Now, when I put this on a battery um, to test, I noticed that that, blanking plate in there got very very hot so it could be a problem with the dc blanking plate because when i put the digital chip in which is a backman digital chip which is usually my go-to choice as soon as i put it on the battery the loco turns over and runs nicely and it is a first to me i've never come across a loco with a factory fitted dcc blanking plate that's actually faulty but there's something wrong with that as it shouldn't get hot at all now the tender draw bar there is uh, bent, so I'm going to just gently tap that out with my pin hammer on my workbench here, just to flatten it back. Now, um, by gently tapping, it will straighten the metal out. 
and uh, once that's done i can put that back into its aperture in the uh, in the chassis there it's held in place with the keeper plate between the chassis keeper plate and the die cast chassis itself with a small plastic lug so now that the chassis is almost complete i'm going to tuck the decoder into the slot there but i'm, I'm first going to just pass it through these wires just to keep the wiring all nice and neat so i'll put that through there put the decoder in and then use a small piece of insulation tape uh, over that metal block just to keep the the chassis and the wiring all nice and neat now now that that's done i'm going to turn my attention to the cosmetic damage on the body now first of all i'm going to give this a good dusting off with a old paintbrush to remove all that old dust and then i'm going to refit the body shell to the chassis and work on that cosmetic detail now you've got to be careful doing this there are some pipe work detail there that you can catch and break if you're not careful and the body shell simply once all that pipes out of the way simply just slots back into place and then it's a case of reattaching that speedometer drive with that very tiny flat headed screw which uh, screws into the crank pin there and then the two screws one under the smoke box one under the cab just testing it there to make sure no wires have become trapped and everything's good and now this loose detail on the top i put some super glue on that with a pin pressed it down and then used a piece of masking tape just to hold that in place while the glue set i just make sure that's in the correct place and put some masking tape over it and then i'm going to turn my attention to the missing handrails now using some 0.5 millimeter brass wire i was able to cut this to length and shape it at one end and then thread it through the um, surviving handrail knobs that were all still there. There was only one missing at the bottom, which we'll replace in a moment. But it threaded through quite nicely. It was a little bit tight. But careful work with a pair of pliers, persuading it along the length of the boiler barrel. Got it lined up into all of the handrail knobs. And then, like I said, there was one missing. I mean, it's a bit over length there, but I'm going to trim that in a minute. And there was one missing in the bottom there so i've got a tub full of spare ones i mean they might not match exactly but when they're painted black you won't notice this was threaded onto the brass wire and then a very small amount of loctite super glue was used on the locating uh, pin this was pushed home into the hole in the backman molding let's remove some excess glue there with a pin yeah, this was pushed home into the hole in the backman molding holding the handrails as they should be and you can see there like i said before it is over length but i'd rather have it over length and have to trim it than have it too short and once the super glue is dried i just trim it to length where it should be using these side snips and it does cut very easy being a very thin brass wire so that's one replaced and now i'm going to turn my attention to the one on the front um the existing backman handrail knobs are broken so i pull these out of the molding using a pair of pliers these are in quite securely but they do come out um with a little bit of pressure and these are replaced with two of the same type out of that spares tub and then again using that same 0.5 mil brass wire this was fed through once the handrail knobs were put in using a bit of super glue and then I put a bit of super glue on a pin and then just secure that brass wire in place like that. And then again, that's trimmed to length with the side cutters. I'm just lining everything up here, getting it all as it should be. And now, once a tiny amount of glue has been applied, I'm just going to snip that off. And that is the handrails now complete on the model and we will touch paint these in later on now sticking with the front of the loco the next thing i'm going to replace is the missing nen coupling i removed the broken shard that was still in the pocket there and just replaced it with a backman one and then the next thing it's missing its two buffers now going through my spares tub i did find two backman buffers off an old loco um, these will need painting but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a tiny amount of super glue again on the buffer shaft making sure not to touch the actual buffer mechanism 
to maintain the sprung buffers. And then once there's a small bit of glue on there, I just push it into the aperture in the buffer beam, hold it in place until the glue sets, making sure that the buffers are straight and level. So that's both buffers replaced. And now I'm going to turn my attention to the tender. And the first thing I'm going to do with this is just give the wheels a quick clean. Not that there's much dirt on these. And turning them by hand using a cotton bud and mess, you can see that there is a little bit of dirt, but nothing like there is, uh, nothing like I was expecting on a model that was in this sort of condition. Now on the tender, there is a, um, there's a lot of old dirt and dust that the paintbrush didn't get off. So using a cotton bud in warm water with some dish soap, I'm just going to rub the top of the body shell and remove all that stubborn dust just to give it a nice clean up. And then I'm going to turn my attention to replacing that missing handle, uh, which is either for a water scoop or a handbrake. Now I'm going to drill out the hole using a 0.5 millimeter drill bit in my pin chuck. I'm then going to insert a small length of that 0.5 mil brass wire, which was actually an off cut off the side handrails. And then bending another piece of that wire up into a, an L shape, I'm just going to touch it gently with a soldering iron and just solder that in place. So the brass, they have now made a hand, uh, hand wheel out of brass to replace the plastic one that was missing. Now, I could have replaced the other one, but as it wasn't broken, I left it in place. And again, this will be touched up with some black paint very shortly. The other thing that was missing was this tender step. So I found a step in my in my detail pack uh, i've got a drawer full of old detail bits and using the broken piece of step as a tab i'm going to glue this in place now it isn't a, a standard uh pattern tender step but it's better than nothing so using that tab again a small amount of super glue this tender step is then put on and the glue uh for the glue to set but then i turn the tender the opposite way once I've positioned the step correctly, reinforce the joint from the rear, and then whilst the super glue is still wet, add a little bit of baking powder to the super glue, and this forms a chemical bond and makes the join very, very strong indeed. I'll just tip the excess off there, and once that's fully set, I'll brush that excess powder away. Now, touching the paint up, my Humbro number. 60 red which is my go-to red for buffer beams it seems to match a lot of the manufacturer's buffer colors and using a triple zero brush i'm just going to touch in the buffer shanks here and then gently blend it into the red on the buffer beam that's already there so working slowly make sure you do the undersides and then i do both buffers so that both of them are matching do the underside there and I do enjoy this detail painting. Now, using some Tamiya black, I have a tub of Tammy here where the black, um, this is nearly empty, but the black has gone really thick and I do like painting with this. So I'm going to touch the handrails in here. No need to prime the brass. I'm just going to go along and touch this side handrail in. And as you can see there, it's blending in rather nicely. And also in, up, upend the model to do the underside so that there's no brass showing through and while the black paint was out i'm also going to touch up the front handrail the handrail knobs on this one need painting as well and then anything else that needs touching up in black which includes the buffers as one of them was white um, and the buffer shanks themselves because that they're all uh, discolored with age so and also the back of the buffers so you just need to touch everything in to make it look nice and tidy and then whilst um, I was at it, I also touched in the edge of the running board, which is die cast. And I've got some chips in the black paint. So working carefully not to destroy any lining, I just touch in any of the, uh, any of the chips along the sides of the loco. And then last but not by no means least is that handrail that we made. So that hand turning thing on the tender there, that's touched up with the black paint as well. So here is the standard five. Now the last detail to do now is the cab glazing. Now I'm not the best at this. But what I do is I keep empty packages like this that come in clear plastic because clear plastic card is quite expensive. 
Whereas if you buy a kit like that, you get some for free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure this up against the side of the cab windows. Now only the front cab windows are glazed and I'm going to fix it in place with this glue and glaze. So what I do is I offer it up to the side of the model and then using these tiny scissors, cut a piece approximate, approximate to the size and then lay it on its side and basically trim it so I've got a piece that's just oversized for the window aperture and then gently trim off the sides and curve the top of the window and keep doing this and, and test fitting it until it's a very nice press snug fit so you can see here it's still a bit too big but in my finger inside the cab it's still a bit too wide but after working on it for a little while you can see in this next shot that I now have a window that looks like it fits correctly and just gentle pressure there it sits in the arm in the aperture and is held in place with friction but what I am going to do is I am going to uh, I am going to secure this in place with some of that glue and glaze so that it doesn't fall out whilst I'm handling the model so you can see there after about 20 minutes work I've got one window done and I've got to do one for the other side but now using a pin I'm just going to run a bead of this glue and glaze around the window frame because you do not want too much of this and even using this little amount I still managed to get some on the glazing but it dries clear so you won't be able to see it and you'll see that in a moment when I've uh, done this but once the glue is all in the aperture there I just gently drop the window that I've cut into place um, hands are not the steadiest for doing this working carefully um, I drop the window in place using a cotton bud to mop away any excess glue the masking tape you can see there that's just holding that pipework detail in I had to glue that on because I realized whilst doing that that the it was quite loose so I just put a bit of glue on that now the front window is very small and I'm going to glue I'm going to glaze this with the glue and glaze now this is a really good product if you run a bead of glue around the outside like I'm doing here with this pin well, what I should have done was used a cocktail stick, something a bit wider. But if you work the glue, as you'll see in a second, you only need a small amount. And when you work the glue, it will cover the whole aperture of a small window like that. And then you leave it to dry, and it will dry crystal clear. And it will provide you with some glazing. Now, if you hang on a second, you will see that this is the next day. And that front glazing there, that's the glue. So it's glued crystal clear. And the side window is glued in place. Now you can see some of the glue on the plastic, but when normal viewing distances, you can't see it. And that's the opposite side. And you can see that I've managed to flush glaze this. And I've also added these two bits of black plastic card here as cab doors, just as a bit of extra detail. Upending the loco into the cradle, I'm going to give the wheels a good clean. This loco only picks up from these six driving wheels. There are no tender pickups, unfortunately. But using a battery to turn the wheels, I'm going to give these a thorough clean and I also clean the wheel backs. Although again, like most of this model, there's very little dirt coming off these. So uh, I'm not sure whether this has had a lot of use and been cleaned or no use at all. So just having a test now to make sure all six wheels are picking up as they should and they, they are. And I'm also going to, while I had the paintbrush out, I also painted the interior of the cab now I don't know how well that's going to come up but you can see I've picked out the dials the regulator and that reversing uh, wheel there I've just picked those out and I've also used a thin pin to put some gauges on those dials it just looks a bit better and I also had a crew that was knocking about so I've painted these up there's a fireman these are the Hornby uh, Hornby fireman crew and the driver will have to cut his legs off do a bit of amputation for him to sit in the seat and using a bit of super glue I'm just going to place him into the cab there so that there's a driver and fireman on this model and those cab doors they really do look quite good and all that is is black plastic card the tender I replaced that missing piece of plastic underneath with a bit of brass wire just to hold the drawbar in place and that is virtually this standard 5 rebuilt and back into running condition fluff on it there I'm going to get that off 
and a battery test proves that it's now a nice runner and it's DCC fitted. So I'm happy with how this turned out. I do like the cosmetic work on these locos sometimes. And for its age, the Backman Standard 5 model is a really nice model. Um, I do like these. I like the standard locos and I've been privileged to actually drive one of these in real life. I drove uh, 73050 City of Peterborough. Now you can see there the glazing and the replacement handrails and buffers. And uh, it really does look quite nice, this model now. The, uh, the big tender on the back looks quite good with its yellow axle boxes. And I am uh, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. One thing I did find when I was doing this was I'd obviously in the past found a box for it. Uh, it's not the correct box for the correct loco, but it is a box for a standard five. So at least now this model will be boxed and not rattling around loose in a tub. So I'm just going to put this in its box to make sure everything fits. Now the box is in quite good condition. I'm just going to unhook the tender from the loco. And uh, put it back in its box ready for testing on the layout. Now also that came with this box was a, um, a card with the history of the standard 5 on. So if you want to pause that. Uh, it's coming up now, so you can read the history of these standard fives. If you've got a loco you'd like to see featured in a future episode of Trash to Track, please email me at dansmodelrowers at gmail.com. We'll have a look again at sent over, and who knows, it may even feature in an episode all of its own. I'll leave you now with some shots of the standard five running around the layout with some Mark 1s. Thank you so much for watching Trash to Track again. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I will catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.